This is awesome day that the Lord has made. I'm beginning a series of messages for the next couple of Sundays entitled Journey with Jesus. Incidentally, that is the theme for this entire year, spiritually, Journey with Jesus. Most of us want Jesus to walk with us, but the truth is we should be walking with Jesus. Matthew chapter 11. In everything we do this year, spiritually, I want us to journey with Jesus. When it comes to this walk with God, it is not a sprint. It is a marathon. You don't, you don't get it over with immediately. Maybe that's why the psalmist says, every day with Jesus, sweeter than the day before. You have Matthew chapter 11. Let's go to verse number 28. You should know this scripture. Jesus said from the New King James Version, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Can you say amen? amen. I want to install part one of this series entitling Yes to the Yoke. Yes to the Yoke. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Say I thought with us, yes, yes. to the Yoke. Yes. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Probably some of the best things you've ever happened, ever happened to you in life happened because you said yes. Otherwise, things just sort of stay the same. That was a quote by Danny Wallace. The success of our journey with Jesus is based upon what we say yes and no to. Some of us say yes to everything but the right thing. And because we say yes, we wish we wouldn't have said yes in the first place. But when it comes to a walk with God, God doesn't want you to be confused. He doesn't want us to do it haphazardly. Because there's nothing worse, Sister Marilyn Harris, than a Christian who haphazardly serves God. People have to force you to come to church. And then when you get here, they gotta force you to lift your hand, say amen, give God an offering. They gotta force you to serve. God's worship and program can go along without something he's got to force you to do. That, 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 that's that's kind of like being connected to, married to somebody just, just because they forced you. Matter of fact, it reminds me, this is not in my notes, it reminds me of a movie, Sister Donna, I, I remember Eddie Murphy starting in called Norbit. <laughs> Norbit was not happy to be with that woman. What was her name? Respuche. Yeah, that's a nice thing. Y'all saw the movie too. Norbit did not like Respuche. Couldn't, but he stayed with her because he couldn't overpower her. Sadly, is the thing, that's like a lot of folk in the body. We just here because we can't do nothing else. God doesn't want a half-hearted yes. Because a half-hearted yes is a whole-hearted no. God wants us to say total yes. The success of your walk with God is based upon you saying yes. So my brothers and sisters, for just a few moments, I want to talk about what happens when we say yes. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus is in the early part of his ministry. 
he is uh, on the, he's doing some things by himself. While he's doing some things by himself, John the Baptist's disciples come to him because John is in prison. They're asking him, are you the Christ? Should we look for another? Uh, Jesus starts encouraging John's disciples, telling them, go back and tell John what you see. And then he starts talking about John, and then he starts talking about the, uh, the, 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 the militarism of the kingdom. He also begins to talk about how it is better for us to repent, and when we repent and turn towards God, how we can receive the blessings of God. But then he gets to our preaching text beginning in verse number 28, and he shares with us something of an invitation. And my brothers and sisters, for 2019, I want to give you an invitation through the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you say, well, Pastor, I've, I've already accepted the invitation. I walked down the aisle, I gave the preacher my hand, and I gave the Lord my heart. But I want to, I want to in, in, introduce us to a more committed relationship. Because you, you can't talk about somebody you don't walk with. Um, some folks say, I know Jesus, I tried him, but you don't walk with him. You, you, you talk about him and you mention him, but you don't walk with him. How do, you, how do you know you don't walk with him? Because you don't like what he does. You don't like how he treats you. You don't like what he said. I know you're saying, Pastor, I do love Jesus. I like him. No, no, no. How can you say you love me, but you don't do the things that I ask you to do? You got to walk when I hear Amos 3, 3 says it like this. How can two walk together except they agree? And so in chapter 11, Jesus says in verse 28, come unto me, all ye that labor and the heavy laden. And so he gives us an invitation. He gives us a call, whether you've been saved all your life or you just got saved last month. He says unto all of us come to me. There are certain things I want to lift in this text and I promise I'm out the door. Number one, when we say yes to the yoke, saying yes initiates with immediate interjection. That's my first point. It, it initiates with immediate interjection. I'm going to say it again. It initiates with immediate interjection. Now, notice the first three words of verse number 28. You got your Bibles open? Listen to what Jesus says. Come to me. Is that what your Bible says? He says, come to me. Now, our, 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 our selfishness wants him to come to us. God come to you. And you know, we often say that we want God to come to where we are. And he will come to us. But the question is, when was the last time you went toward him? He can easily come down to where you are. But, the, but, but when you walk with him, you got to come up to where he is. In other words, he wants to upgrade you. But you can't let, but you can't be upgraded if you want him to downgrade to where you are. You don't want to think that you're a downgrade. Anytime you're walking in sin, living in sin, thinking sin, talking sin, that's a downgrade. And God says, I'm trying to use my son Jesus Christ to call you up to where I am. So come to me. Let church say, come to me. Now that word, that word, that word come, it, 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 it's not, it's, he's not, he's not pacifying. He, it, it's literally an urgent call. He's literally saying, when he says, come to me, he says, come now. In other words, he says, don't be hasty in coming to me. If I've called you, I need you to do it. Don't work, don't, don't, don't guess about it. Don't think about it. Get off of where you are and do it immediately. Let the church say right now. Because when it comes to the Lord and doing the things that he's called you to do, the enemy will tempt you to be lazy and slowful. But when the Lord tells you to do something, you got to do it right then. Somebody say right now. He says, come to me. Watch this. There's the call. But number two, he, he's given a call to two categories. You still in verse 28? He says, come to me. Here it is. All ye that labor. That word, that word labor uh, literally means fatigued. Those who are exhausted. So if you're exhausted, come to me. If you're tired, come to me. If you're restless, come to me. Now you're saying, pastor, I'm fit as a fiddle. I've got the energy of 10,000 men. How is it that the Lord is talking to me? Anytime you are walking in sin, sin will cause you to be mentally tired. It'll cause you to be 
physically tired. It'll cause you to be, y'all ain't never been tired from sin, okay? Let, let, let me see if I can make sense of what I'm saying. Have you been, have you ever, nah, I'm, 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 I'm talking about before you got saved. You remember when, before you got saved, when you would turn up all night long? Y'all being super deep this morning. Remember when you would do your heart, when you would drop it like it was hot and pick it up like it was cold, you would, couldn't nobody beat you twerking, couldn't nobody beat you doing the Y2C, couldn't nobody beat you doing the Harlem Shuffle, couldn't nobody beat you on the dance floor wobbling, and while you were wobbling, you were wobbling with Patron in your hand, you were wobbling with, y'all ain't talking back to me now, you, 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 you had Black and Mile in one hand, and Great Goose in the other, and shaking that thing, shaking what your mama gave you, and by the time you got off the dance floor, it was three o'clock in the morning, your body was some of us, the reason why we can't do it no more is because Father Time didn't step in. Can't do what you used to, but you sure think about it. You say to yourself, these young girls don't know what they're doing. If, if I get on the dance floor, you can't get on the dance floor no more because there's a leak in these old buildings. <laughs> Y'all ain't talking back to me. Sin will make you tired. And he says, if you watch this, don't miss this. So the reason you'll never be sick and tired until you get sick and tired. I may be preaching to somebody here today. You've been living in sin. You've been living in a place that you don't like. The question is, when will you get sick and tired of being sick and tired? When will you be sick and tired of losing a relationship with God? When will you be sick and tired of being angry and frustrated and depressed and disgruntled and mad and bitter and evil when the choice is not on the Lord, the choice is on you? Come to me! of you who are exhausted. That's the first part of the category. But then number two, he says those of you who are weary and heavy laden. Now, 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 here's the thing, here's the thing you need to understand about heavy laden. Uh, Deacon Nelson, heavy laden is not self-imposed. Okay. That means somebody put a load on you watch this without your permission. Now, now, you may not want to admit it, but you and I can testify, I got enough to keep myself straight. Now I got to deal with my stuff and yours? Can't hear nobody talking to me. And some of us don't realize it, but we're carrying other loads we were never meant to carry. Every time we talk to people and they dump stuff on us, every time they start telling us what we ought to be doing and what we should be doing, every time they start telling us against what thus saith the Lord, people start dumping on us. And baby, God never named you hefty. Are not made of brown plastic. So since you're not a garbage bag, quit letting people dump on you. Some of us are tired because we let other people dump on us. You are not a trash bag. Jesus said, if you're tired of being dumped upon, come to me. Those of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you. Now that word rest, watch this. What it means is refreshment. Watch this. You're going to shout you with expectation. You're going to miss your shout you. So what the Lord is saying is when you come to me, I'll give you rest from everything that burdened you down. But while you're resting, you'll also be expecting something greater than what you've already had. Now I need about five of us in here who says 2018 was up and down, but I'm resting right now. Some of y'all ain't been through a storm yet since the year started. You ain't been through a test yet. You ain't been through no hell yet. You want to know why? God's got you resting, but you're not resting for the next storm. You're not not resting for the next test. You're resting because something greater is on the way. 
I need 12 of us in here who knows that God's got greater for you than 2018. He's got greater for you than what you've already been through. And that's why it's quiet right now because God's got you in his arms until greater comes to pass. If I'm preaching to you, shake your neighbor's hand and say, I'm just waiting on God. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, yes, I am. I don't know what he's going to do in January. I don't know what he's going to do in February. It ain't even about no taxes. It ain't about no income. It ain't about no divorce. It ain't about no paycheck. I'm expecting something bigger than what you see. Come unto me, all you that labor. And heavy late, you got to do it now. Get to the Lord now. Some of us have not prayed like we were supposed to in 2018. 2018, you need to, as Minister Harris said, you need to step up your game. Get back into your word. Get back on your knees. Let me take you a little bit further. Get on your face. Talk to the Lord who's been waiting to talk to you. Let me keep going. Number, number one, you have to initiate the yes with an immediate interjection. But number two, let's keep going. Saying yes involves willful, intentional increase. Saying yes involves willful, intentional increase. Where are you, Pastor? I'm at verse number 29. Jesus says, take my yoke. Stop right there. Now watch this. You can't say yes until you mean yes. I know, I know, I know. Uh, I, I say a lot of movies and stuff. Uh, one, me and my wife, one of our favorite TV shows uh, was A Different World. Uh, Y'all remember Sister Glory Henderson, that episode when Whitney was getting married to the senator and uh, when the preacher asked her, do she take the senator to be married, she didn't say nothing. Uh, she got quiet. The mama said, I do. The preacher said, no, she's got to say it. Some of us, we think that the Lord hears our yes. But God's got to know that you mean what you say. He says, take it. That word take means I'm doing it willfully. So, so, when you get, so when you take this yoke upon you, it's not because somebody put a gun to your head and make you take it. You did it because you wanted to. When you get saved, it's because you want to. When you serve, it's because you want to. Nobody should force you to do something for God that you don't want to do. Am I making sense? Take, watch this, my yoke. Let the word, let the church say yoke. Now, that, that word yoke in the Greek is zygotis, Z-Y-G-O-T-I-S. Now I'm blessed with this. That word yoke is not only agricultural, it's biological. Okay, because that, that word yoke, it, it's an agricultural term where, where they would yoke uh, two oxen together uh, to plow the field. That's, that, that's agriculture. Because you do know in the text, Jesus uh, met them where they were because they were most agricultural uh, by nature so he said let me t let me give you something you can deal with so Jesus says but 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 you're missing beyond the agriculture there's something biological in it because the, 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 the origin of the word yoke is zygotes is where we get the word biologically zygote z-y-g-o-t-e now what, what is a zygote it's when um, a man's seed God help me uh, fertilizes a woman's egg. They come together and become a cell. Okay, uh, Jesus, help me. Now watch this. Uh, when, when they become a cell, the cell starts breaking off into more cells to the point where the cells become what is called an organism. An organism becomes a person. A person becomes a baby through nine months. It, it stays in the womb of a woman until it comes out as a baby. God is saying, if you yoke up with me, what I have and what you have will produce something that you couldn't do by yourself. Hold up. Hold up. 
But this also sets up for the next thing. He says, take my yoke. What else? No, no, no. And do what? Now watch this. That word learn sets up the word zygote. Because the word learn does, just, does not just mean to acquire information. Watch this. You want me to shout you. The word learn means, here's the first thing, to increase. So when you hook up with Jesus, the only thing you have to do is increase. And that's why some people don't like where you are because since you hooked up with Jesus, the only thing you've been doing is increasing. I can't hear nobody talking to me. You increase in spirit. You increase in knowledge. You increase in prayer. You increase in study. You increase in worship. I know what your problem is. You want a bigger house. You want a bigger car. You want a bigger bay. But the truth be told is, if I don't have anything tangible, as long as I increase in spirit. <sighs> When you hook up with the Lord, you have no choice but to increase. Let the church say increase. Take my yoke, yes Lord, and learn of me, increase. But watch this, uh, he doesn't just want you to accept it and uh, arrive from it. He also wants you, when you say yes, to have a different attribute. Because watch this. There's nothing wrong with being blessed as long as you don't become arrogant. Because uh, uh, God can't bless some of us because we th we'll start thinking we better than everybody else. And the difference between you and your neighbor is you just got your blessing first. Y'all not talking back to me. I, I, I'm not saying ain't nothing, right, ain't nothing wrong with you having Givenchy. Ain't nothing wrong with you having red bottoms. Ain't nothing wrong with you having Jimmy Choo. Ain't nothing wrong with you rolling around in a Benz or a Bentley or a Mercedes or a Beamer. But the truth be told is, if that stuff gets taken away, can you still be content with, being, with having Jesus and Jesus alone? It's all right to have stuff, but I'd rather have Jesus. Some folk got cars and are cocky. They got a house, but they haughty. And the Lord said, I can't bless you because then you, then you think you're bigger and better than everybody else. But if the truth be told, if I cut you and I cut them, y'all both gonna bleed the same color. And when you die, you can't take your stuff with you. So he says, for I am meek. And that's, it's right there. I can't read. He says, I'm meek. Now, now, now hear, me, hear me when I say meek and lowly. It doesn't mean that you're timid. It just means you're humble. Now, now watch this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you mad. You don't have to be loud to be strong. It ain't Bible, but it's country theology that an empty wagon. Somebody heard it. Somebody heard it. Makes the most noise. You ever seen somebody? All they do is loud talk and loud talk. It like it, it's like they overcompensating for something. But if you know who you are in God, you ain't got to even open your mouth. We, we talked about this the other day. Back in the day, Daddy didn't have to say he was home. But when Daddy came home, everybody else said, "Daddy home." Wanna know why? Because leadership ain't gotta be loud. And when God has blessed you, you ain't gotta flaunt it to everybody. Matter of fact, God will show it all for you. I gotta go, I gotta go. He says, I'm meek, I'm lowly. 
you'll find rest for your soul. Can I give you one more thing in the table is calling? Now I'm done. The last thing that we say, what happens when we say yes is, number three, we are inspired with intimate implications. Y'all see it? On the verse 30, we are inspired, let church say inspired, inspired. with in, intimate implications. Watch this, verse 30. Listen to what Jesus says. For my yoke is easy. My, okay, here's, here's the thing. Because Christ centers this around himself. Now hold up, Bible students, by the flaw of the text, you would think, Sister Libby, that when we join with Jesus, that it's our yoke. Jesus said, no, 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 no. Even though you're with me, it's still mine. Now you would think that the Lord is being selfish, but the Lord knows something you don't. What does he know that I don't? You're asking all the right questions. Sometimes we don't shoulder our end of the yoke. Y'all been, you've been saved all your life. You've been perfect. I'm talking to somebody here who messed up since January 1. No, we ain't done everything the Lord told us to do. And he still doesn't take the yoke off of us. As a matter of fact, he said, even when you ain't got it, I got you. And I here by myself. Even when you can't bless me, I'll bless you. Even when you're not faithful, I'm faithful to you. Is there anybody here that knows that God will still hold up his end even when we don't? For my yoke is easy. That, 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 that means that means that's a centered claim. But number two, there's a convenient coupling. He says, my yoke, that's the coupling, is convenient. It's easy. Uh, it's not as strenuous. Watch this. You're gonna miss your shout cue. As what you used to be under. Y'all don't say something. Jesus is talking to them because the Jews at this time had been under the suppression of not only the Romans, but also the weight, watch this, of the law of sin. They were trying to keep all 600 plus laws and messed up every time. So God says to Jesus, let me give you something else you can handle. For my yoke is easy. Some folks said being a Christian is hard. I disagree with you. Being a Christian is easy because we got somebody who gives us perfect imbalance. What do you mean? That when we can't handle our load, he handles our load and his. Have I got a witness here? But let me give you something else, and I'm out to go. The table is calling. The last thing that happens when, when, with this is, he says, you have capable cargo. Look at what he says. He says, for my yoke is easy. Here it is. And my burden. That word, that word burden is where we get the word freight. Cargo. Meaning that uh, you're used to carrying something you can't carry. <laughs> but now that you're connected to me, what you can carry, you can actually carry it by yourself. But you can't carry it if you're outside of me. And some of y'all in here right now, you may not want to admit it, but your life has been heavy. The reason why it's heavy is, is because you took the yoke off and you told the Lord, I got it. Oh, yes, you have. Yes, we all have. There's been a moment in our lives where we told the Lord, I got this one. No, Lord. No, you told me to turn the other cheek. I'm out of cheeks now. I got this one, Lord. Let me tell them which way to go. How soon to get there. Some of us have told the Lord things we shouldn't have told him. And God said, I'm going to show you that without me, you can't do it by yourself. That's why the Bible says that he gave them over to a reprobate mind. Me and God said, if you think you're big enough, bad enough to handle it by yourself, go on with your bad self. 
and you'll come back crying with your head between your legs saying Lord I, I messed up I'm jacked up I can't do it without you as long as you stay connected here's just, I'm done as long as you stay connected you'll be covered try it again long as you stay connected you'll be covered let me try it again long as you stay connected you'll be covered one more time long as you stay connected you'll be covered just the other day and I'm done uh, my family and I went to see to a movie and uh, the difference between going to this movie and the other movies the weather was inclement uh, we had to rush in the car rush out the car and so while we were coming out of the movie theater the wind had become more boisterous the, the water and the rain had become more fierce the thing was we all had coats on but the wind started blowing the umbrellas but the good thing about it is we told Carter to stay up under mama and daddy <laughs> Carter had her own little cute pink little umbrella but mom and dad had a big black umbrella and although the wind was blowing the black umbrella it didn't touch Carter's little pink umbrella she got to the car unwet and unharmed by the wind if God can do that with mama daddy and Carter as long as you stay connected to God the winds may blow the breakers may dash but if you stay connected to the Lord, you're going to make it out of the storm. Have I got a witness here? Would you tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, stay connected. In other words, let me tell you what Big Mama used to say. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Is there anybody here? Have you made up in your mind? Let hell or high water come. I'm going to stay connected unto the one that can cover me. Why are you going to stay connected? He's got a track record for covering the connected. He covered Moses through the Red Sea. He covered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. He covered Daniel in the lion's den. And one Friday on a hill called Calvary, he covered Jesus on a whole rugged cross. But bright early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Shake a neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, it doesn't matter what happens to you. Stay connected because can't nobody 